<laughs> okay. So, why do we need standardized terms, definitions, and measurements? Tom already mentioned it. We need standardized terms and definitions to understand each other in our daily clinical practice. If I say multilocular solid mass, it should mean the same to you as it means to me. If I say papillary projection, it should mean the same to you as it means to me. And if I mention the size of a papillary projection, it should mean the same to you as it means to me. That is, measurements should be taken in the same manner irrespective of who takes the measurements. And of course, without a standardized terminology, it is meaningless to compare scientific studies with each other, and it's meaningless to try to join results in meta-analysis. And of course, if we want to conduct multi-center studies, we must use the same standardized examination technique, measurement technique, and terminology. And of course, if you want to use the IOTA methods, you must use the IOTA terminology. Otherwise, the methods will not work in your hands. So this is the consensus statement that I will discuss with you today. It was published in the year of 2000 and has the title Terms, Definitions and Measurements to describe the sonographic features of an exotumors, a consensus opinion from the International Ovarian Tumor Analysis Group. This is a consensus statement on how to examine and how to measure an masses and which terminology we should use when we describe our ultrasound images of an masses. And this is the, term in, uh, the examination technique, measurement technique, and terminology that are used in all IOTA studies, but that are now more and more being introduced into clinical practice all over the world. So these are the variables that we use to describe an anexal mass using the IOTA terminology. And I will go through the definitions of the most important variables with you, and I will describe how to take measurements of lesion, the size of the solid component, a papillary projection, and the amount of free fluid in the pouch of Douglas. So what is the IOTA definition of a lesion? The IOTA definition of a lesion is part of an ovary inconsistent with normal physiology. So this part of this ovary here is not consistent with normal physiology. This is a Sertoli Leydig cell tumor. And this part of this ovary is not consistent with normal physiology. It's a case of stroma ovari. And of course, this here is a completely solid anexal mass. It's not compatible with normal physiology. This, however, is not a lesion, because this is a hemorrhagic corpse lithium, and a hemorrhagic corpse lithium is consistent with normal physiology. The iota definition of a solid component. This is extremely important, because if you do not get this right, the iota methods will not work in your hands. So the IOTA definition of a solid component is a structure that has echogenicity suggestive of tissue, such as myometrium or ovarian stroma, and all tissue is potentially vascularized. This means that the round white ball in a dermoid cyst consisting of hair and sebum should not be classified as a solid component because a ball of hair and sebum is not tissue that can be vascularized. And a blood clot or a lump of mucus should also not be classified as a solid component. A blood clot isn't tissue that can be vascularized. A lump of mucus is not tissue that can be vascularized. Sometimes, however, it's difficult to know 
if a structure is solid tissue or some amorphous material. And then there are different tricks that you can use. You can push upon the mass, and sometimes it happens that the suspicious structures, they lift, move away from the wall, and start to swim freely in the cyst fluid. Then you know it's not solid tissue, it's some amorphous material, for example, a blood clot. And sometimes, when you push upon a lesion, you can see that the suspicious structure moves in a jelly-like fa fashion. Now, solid tissue doesn't move like that. And then you know this is not solid tissue, it's a blood clot or possibly a lump of mucus. Another trick that we can use to distinguish solid tissue from amorphous material is to switch on the color Doppler function of our ultrasound machine. And if we clearly see vessels in the suspicious structure, we know that it is solid tissue. But if we don't see any color Doppler signals, we still don't know if we are dealing with solid tissue or something else. Because the reason why we cannot detect color Doppler signals can be purely technical. Maybe our Doppler settings are wrong, Maybe our ultrasound system isn't sensitive enough to detect slow velocity blood flow, or maybe the lesion is situated too far away from the probe for it to be possible to detect slow velocity blood flow. Another trick that we can use to distinguish solid tissue from amorphous material, but that is not mentioned in any IOTA document, is to look at the contour of the suspicious structure. If the contour is clearly concave, as you can see here, it is probably a blood clot. Solid tissue usually does not have a concave contour. Now, if after having applied all these tricks, you still don't know if you are dealing with solid tissue or something else, you should classify the structure as a solid component, because worst case scenario rules. The IOTA definition of papillary projection is also extremely important, because if you don't get this right, the IOTA methods will not work in your hands. So the IOTA definition of a papillary projection is protrusion of solid tissue into a cyst cavity, with a height of at least three millimeters. Protrusions of solid tissue into a cyst cavity with a height less than three millimeters is not classified as a papillary projection. Of course, a papillary projection is a solid component because, by definition, a papillary projection is protrusion of solid tissue into the cyst cavity. So a papillary projection is a particular subgroup of solid component. This, however, is not a papillary projection because this solid tissue does not protrude into the cyst cavity. When we use the IOTA terminology, there are five types of tumor. And this, too, is extremely important, because if you don't get this right, the IOTA methods will not work in your hands. So a unilocular cyst is a, one, is a cyst with one cyst locule, no septa, no solid components. A unilocular solid cyst is a cyst with one cyst locule, with solid components, and the solid component can be a papillary projection or some other type of solid component. A multilocular cyst is a cyst that contains septa, but no solid components, and this means that even a bilocular cyst is classified as a multilocular cyst when you use the IOTA terminology. A multilocular solid cyst contains both septa and solid components, and the solid components can be a papillary projection or some other type of solid tissue. 
and a solid mass consists of at least 80% solid tissue. So you have to scan through the whole volume of the lesion and you estimate whether or not it consists of more than 80% solid tissue. So please remember, a unilocular cyst cannot contain solid tissue. A multilocular cyst cannot contain solid tissue. As soon as there is a solid component, the word solid must appear in the classification of the cyst. So instead of saying a cyst locule with, uh, uh, sorry, a cyst with one cyst locule and a solid component, we say unilocular solid cyst. Instead of saying a cyst with both septa and solid components, we say multilocular solid cyst. These are examples of shadowing. We can have shadowing behind the white ball of hair and sebum in a dermoid cyst. We can have fan-shaped shadowing in a fibroma. We can have shadowing behind papillary projections in a serous cyst adenofibroma. When we use the IOTA terminology, there are five types of cyst contents. Anechoic, low level, ground glass, hemorrhagic, and mixed. The IOTA definition of a septum is a thin strand of tissue that runs from one internal cyst surface to another. And the IOTA definition of an incomplete septum is a thin strand of tissue that doesn't reach the wall, the opposite wall of the cystic structure as you can see here. And incomplete septa are characteristic of diseased tubes, such as hydrosalpings, pyosalpings, hematosalpings. The ovarian crescent sign. The ovarian crescent sign is not used in any IOTA method, but I think it is worth mentioning it because you might come across this uh, term. So the IOTA definition of the ovarian crescent sign is that normal ovarian tissue is visible. So for example, here we have a lesion contained within the ovary and surrounded by normal ovarian tissue. So we say the ovarian crescent sign is positive. Here, you have a completely normal ovary, and close to it, there is a cyst, a paraovarian cyst. So normal ovarian tissue is visible. And so we say the ovarian crescent sign is positive. Ascites, the iota definition of ascites is fluid outside the pouch of Douglas. The iota color score is based on subjective evaluation of the color content of the tumor scan. So a color score of one means no detectable color Doppler signals in the tumor. A color score of two means a minimal amount of color Doppler signals detectable. A color score of three, a moderate amount of color Doppler signals detectable. And a color score of four, abundant color detectable. And of course, to estimate the color content of a tumor scan, you must adjust your Doppler settings to maximize detection of slow velocity blood flow without artifacts. And in most ultrasound machines, a pulse repetition frequency, PRF, of 0.3 to 0.6 kilohertz is optimal. Then you increase the gain until you see the color Doppler artifacts come, and then you decrease the gain until the Doppler artifacts just disappear. Measurements. How do we take measurements using the standardized IOTA measurement technique? We should always take three, measure three orthogonal diameters, three diameters at right angles to each other, and we should take these measurements where we estimate that the structure that we want to measure 
is at its largest. So if we want to measure the size of an ovarian cyst, we first obtain a longitudinal section through the cyst, and we measure the length and the anterior-posterior diameter on that longitudinal section through the cyst where we estimate that the cyst is at its largest. And then we turn our transducer 90 degrees to obtain a transfer section of the cyst, and then we measure the width of the cyst on that transfer section where we estimate that the cyst is at its largest. How do we measure a papillary projection? We should always measure the largest papillary projection. We measure three orthogonal diameters. And when we measure the height of the papillary projection, we should not include the thickness of the wall or the thickness of the septum from which the papillary projection arises in our measurement. So how can you practice the IOTA terminology? You can go to this website. It's available for free. And on this website, you find three lectures. You find the lecture that I have just presented to you. You find one lecture on the ADNEX model, which you will hear about later. One lecture on how to use the ADNEX model. And there are two questionnaires. In the first questionnaire, you can test your ability to correctly use the IOTA terminology. And in the other questionnaire, you can assess your ability to use the IOTA methods. And then, of course, there is a lot of information to be found on the IOTA website. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lily. It was absolutely important to listen to your lecture in order to reach a consensus here, in order to go on and to discover the IOTA models. Do you have a questions to Professor Valentin from the audience? Is it everything clear, the difference between a papillary projection and solid, for instance? Otherwise, I have a tricky question. No, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a question over there. You should go to the microphone, please. While waiting for the question, I want to ask you, the tricky question is, a solid lesion, everything is clear? Solid lesion, at least 80%. Is it possible to have papillary projections in a solid tumor at Yes, it is possible. Is it not so easy, to, so clear? Can you explain why? Yes, because uh, if you have a solid lesion that consists of, say, 80% um, solid okay. tissue, there are, of course, some cystic areas in the tumor. Okay. And in these cystic areas, there can be papillary projections. It's not impossible. It can be. can be. Thank you, Lip. Please. Um, with regarding to the septation. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Man from Australia. Okay. Yeah. So just regarding to the septation. Yes. Is it uh, that the IOTA didn't mention anything about the vascularity of the septation? The vascularity of the septations has absolutely no clinical relevance. Okay. It just if you have a sensitive Doppler ultrasound machine, you will almost always see yeah. the blood flow in the septa. Any other right. question? Lila, would you like to explain why you are so sure that the thickness of the septum is not so relevant, or vascularity in the septum? You want to explain, because of, of course you didn't mention the 50 variables we analyzed yeah, during, yeah. after the consensus, uh, and then we excluded uh, yeah, those yeah. Uh, not relevant. So when we, when we built the models, yeah. uh, the simple rules, we looked at 40, 50 variables, as Antonia said, and then some variables, for example, thickness of the septum or the vascularity of the septum, they didn't uh, provide any clinical information. The variables that did provide clinical information and were useful, they are included in, in our models and, and the simple rules. Thank you, Lee. Any other doubts? Okay, we can move on. Then later 